I came from a family where my dad was a very renowned physician. My two brothers were physicians. So right from the day I knew that that's what my fate is going to be. I had got my medical degree in India and I had also done a master's in surgery in India. I got my first job as a physician in the government and it was like a hard slap on my face. I realized that there was so much corruption and so much uh, problems practicing medicine that I realized that I could not survive in that environment. And at that time, there was a provision called ECFMG, which a physician had to pass to come to be trained in the United States. So I took the exams and I was very fortunate uh, that I was selected by a surgical residency which included Harvard, Tuft and Boston University. In the early 80s, one of my friends asked, are you a citizen? And I said, oh, you know, I have never even thought about it. So then I put the application and all the papers were approved. And uh, the swearing in was scheduled for the 1st of October, 1984. They said, well, you're lucky. You've got to go to the Cobo Hall and President Reagan is coming and he's going to swear you in. He said, my fellow Americans, my fellow Americans, welcome to your country. I had literally tears flowing down my eyes. I said, what better form of democracy can there be when the president is swearing in a citizen of the country and welcoming him? So sitting there, the thought came to my mind that my father had served the country and had been physician to two presidents of India. And here I am in a new country starting as a citizen and the president is welcoming me. So it was a really heartfelt moment which changed my life from there onwards. It uh, totally made me think in a totally different way that now I'm a citizen of the United States. I have to do the best I can for the people of this country and make a difference in their lives. So when I started practicing urology, prostate problems were one of the common problems men faced. And we had an old technology which was called the rotor router, which was very painful, a lot of bleeding. And I said, we've got to find something better than this. And I started doing research on lasers. And in 1999, I was asked to do the FDA study. In 2000, we got the approval to do the green light laser. With this laser procedure, there is hardly any bleeding, minimal amount of pain, and patient can go home the same day. So we had patients flying in from all over the country to have the procedure done here. We were having a lot of urologists from all over the world coming here to learn the technology so they can learn it. And now we have done over a million of these surgeries in the world, all around the world. I have taught in 63 countries this procedure. Um, so it has definitely now become the gold standard of benign prostate disease. I had been working at uh, the hospital with the Oakwood system at that time for over 20 years. And I felt that the patients were kind of dehumanized when they come to a hospital. They are a number and everybody is uh, treating them in that form. And I wanted a more personal treatment for them, uh, more kindness. Surgical Institute of Michigan brought a lot of these procedures which were done in the hospital out into our ambulatory surgical center. And we realized that these, these surgeries can be done much better here in a much better situation a much better environment than in the hospital. I'm most proud that I loved my patient and I treated them as family and helped them get over their medical condition. Uh, some of them were life-saving situations and some of them was improving the quality of their life. But I think I could give a gift to them which would long last in their lives.